Hello everyone, welcome to our Live at Five. Um, tonight, we're going to reveal a couple of quilts that I've made with some of the blocks from our Back to Basics sampler. And um, I had told you, well, first of all, it's the first of the month, so you should be cleaning your machines. Just, um, just a reminder, it'll help your machines last longer. Um, Tony and I have been sewing like mad women today. Turn it the other way so they can see the up and down. I'm going to turn the camera that way so you can see. That is one of the quilts. Uh, let me move my, see if I can move this and then move my picture out of the way so you can see. That is, Tony step back about four feet. Yeah. That way you can see. Now the top of, um, bring it down just a little bit. No, I'll bring this up. That center blue part is a spacer. So you may have to measure and decide how much space needs to go in there according to how big your um, inner border is. The, the green border, the light green border, serves as a spacer to accommodate the pieced border. Because anytime you add a pieced border to a project, you have to make sure that um, if it's important to you that the pieces fit in exactly, you have to make sure that the border that comes before that is your coping border to make them fit nicely. So that one piece in the middle is just kind of a spacer piece to make sure that your borders are the right size. So that's one quilt and I, I ended up with 31 blocks because I made an extra block. So while I was at it, I just made one more. So I had 32 blocks to work with. So the one that Tony showed you has one more border to go and then I'm going to do another quilt like that. This one is set on point. I'm gonna pan down and it doesn't have all the borders on it. So I used eight of my blocks in this quilt set on point and I'll put that in the handouts for tonight just so if you um, want to look at that you'll know what size to cut your triangles. Now I did um, cut the triangles a little bigger than I needed and then trimmed down when I got everything on there. Um, one way that you can put it together is instead of putting your pieced uh, border with the um, split wrecks going sideways, I'll put this up here so you can kind of see it, you could have them be more spiky and that makes that border a six inch border so that's totally um, an option as well. And we haven't really decided exactly how big of a border we're going to put on this. That turns out to be about 72 by 87 ish. So um, almost a nice twin size quilt. So you have options of what you do with your blocks, even if you didn't make all uh, 30 blocks that were in the project. Um, and if you, there were 30, Tony says 35, but I only had 30. No, five rows of six. Mm -hmm. So you may, you may have made extra blocks, which I ended up making two blocks um, extra to go in my project. Oh, another thing that you could do with this layout that's a six inch pieced border. So if you liked making six inch blocks, you could just insert a whole bunch of six inch blocks in there, um, not just the spikes. And I don't know how many uh, split rex units we'll use there, but um, we have several pieces left over or that match the pieces we used um, that may go in the borders for the quilts that we make. So that's what I'm doing with the blocks that I was using as our samples. So tonight we're going to start a new project. This is just a little short project. I'm trying to move this out of the way. This is called um, Economizer. It's a great um, stash busting type project. Now of course you could use all economy blocks. Um, you could throw a few stars in like the picture shows. This one is um, seven blocks by nine blocks, I believe it is. And it's really kind of a crib size at this point with no borders. You could always add another, board, another row of blocks as well, or you could add a border. You could even make more blocks. That's um, a queen size quilt, and those are all six inch blocks. So the thing to remember about this is, I don't know if you noticed, but each, uh, 
every other block switches where the, color, the lights and darks go. So up in the top corner, you have a light center, then a dark ring, and then one more light ring. Next to it is the block that has a dark center, a light ring, and then a dark ring. And I'm calling those uh, four triangles on that economy a ring. So behind me are a whole bunch of the blocks that I made that I've been playing with. So I'm going to bring them over here closer so you can see them. This is my dark center, light ring, dark ring. And here's my light center, darker ring, light ring. So you're going to have basically an equal number of um, the two col or, uh, intensity combinations. So you're going to have an equal number of light centers and an equal number of dark centers. So when you do that, here's what you're going to need to gather up for your um, project. You're going to need pairs of matching prints because each of your four, uh, sets of four triangles are cut from two matching squares. So of your dark fabric, you're going to need 29 pairs of matching prints that are cut four and a fourth inches. And then you're also going to need 29 pairs of matching prints of lights. Then you're going to need 29 matching prints of three and a half inch squares plus 29 singles. And the reason you're going to need those singles is that's what makes this center um, block on this economy block. Now this should be review if you've been watching the Back to Basics sampler. It hasn't been that long since we did economy blocks, but just in case we have somebody new um, watching I decided to just review the economy blocks. Next week we'll talk about the star blocks that I threw in and they're totally random um, and totally optional. You could also insert any other six inch block you have or if you have a really interesting print that you'd like to use, you could also put that as your center. Now I wanted to show you how I determined what fabrics I used. Um, behind me it's kind of dark and it's hard to see, but I actually started with this plaid fabric. And in my head I was working from um, something that went with denim. So I have this nice blue and burgundy. So all the colors I chose were shirtings for my lights or blues or burgundies for my darks. And I did that with my stars as well. So you have the option of just totally random colors but you do need to consider light and dark because of where they're placed. That's what makes the pattern emerge. Um, or you could just pick a, a color recipe like I did where I decided on blue and burgundy. Um, you could also, if you decided on denim, you could actually insert a six inch square of denim or a six inch square of chambray, which makes kind of a cozy looking quilt. So that's an option for you as well. So just so that you see how I've got my stuff prepared over, I've got to find my mouse, there you go. Here's my overhead camera. This is the tool we're going to be using. We'll talk about that in just a minute. I have my plates, I have a bunch of centers, and I've got some darks and some light centers. Those are three and a half. Then I have a whole bunch of pairs of uh, triangles. They're kind of mixed up right now, but I have pairs of triangles. Here's a pair and another pair where I cut those squares in half. That makes my four triangles to go around my light colored center. And then I would need a dark color or yeah, no, a light colored. I forget which one I'm on. Then I need another pair. This one is cut from my four and a quarter inch squares and you need to put those in pairs so that you end up with four triangles. Now, of course, if you want to do totally scrappy, you could take a light center and four different dark triangles. I just find that to be um, a little more scrappy than I want for this project. But if you're trying to clean out your stash and, and uh, that sort of thing. This is certainly an acceptable way of making the economy block and then you do the same thing with your outer triangles as well. So when you're using the um, square square tool, let me 
put everything back the way I found it. And I'm going to do a dark center and a light center for you today. I'm going, going to use this lightish dark center. And then I'm going to need um, four matching triangles to go around that. And I've got four matching triangles to go around my dark. And then I've got four light triangles out of my um, four and a half or four and a quarter inch squares. And so there's my dark. So there's two blocks right there. So I'm going to move all my other plates out of the way. And I actually have made a bunch of my blocks. So I'm going to be ready to start putting blocks together. And you, like I said, you don't have to stick with the number of blocks I have. You may decide that you want more blocks. Um, you want to insert assorted pieces uh, to extend the size of your quilt. And of course, you can always put borders on it. Now, the way the square squared tool is constructed, there are two parts. If you own the large tool, it's actually two separate pieces of plastic. And one of them is marked part A and one is marked part B. On the original size, they're all in the same piece of plastic. And I marked with a Sharpie on mine the corner that has the center square window templates is your part A. The B part is the, is the part you're going to use to actually trim down. Now, the thing about making the economy block using the square squared tool it's a little unusual in the way you use it because normally you would cut the center square of your unit using, <coughs> excuse me, the A part of your um, tool. With this, you're not going to do that. You're, for this size, you just need a three and a half inch square and that is the size you need. Hang on just a second. I've got a tickle, so I'm going to put a cough drop in or I'm going to keep coughing. Um, so we have our center square, squ square cut at three and a half inches. Then our first ring on this particular one, we're going to put light fabric. On this one, we're going to put dark fabric. Those are also cut from three and a half inch square. So that's why on your um, cutting chart, it says that you need um, 29 pairs plus some singles. 29 pairs plus some singles. So that's the purpose of that. So I'm just going to take all of this over to the sewing area. Do we have questions? Mm -hmm. Somebody says they're really cutting out. I don't know what the deal is because as far as I know, it's not cutting out here, but I would not swear to that. And oh, and I have to tell you, a couple of weeks ago, somebody put that I was cutting out. And then I got this strange message that they were refusing to play part of my video because I was violating copyright on music. Okay, if there was music playing, it was just the background music. So I don't know what they thought they heard. So it said that they had deleted part of my video. And I said, okay, whatever. Just never know about them. So here's my center square and my four triangles. When you're making your square squared unit, this was the hardest thing for me to get used to, and that is to put your square on top and your triangle on bottom, so that when you feed that through your machine, I just realized I have my light on. Hang on a second. Now, <coughs> you should be able to see better. You're going to put the triangle on bottom next to the feed dogs, the square on top, next to your presser foot and then it'll feed through better and I'm using the edge of my patchwork foot as my guide to stitch a quarter inch from the edge of my square and let's just do that with my dark one and my light triangle another thing that we used to have to do um, I don't know if you've been quilting long enough that your instructions said pinch and find the center and match them up and you don't have to do that. Just even it up and make sure that you have about the same amount of an ear sticking out on both sides of your square and feed it through because you don't have to fuss with it. When I get to this point though, I do want to attend to the patchwork foot 
because the center square is cut to the precise size that I need. So I'm going to grab my scissors and grab my first square that I fed through and get another triangle. And again, I'm just centering it on there just by eye and feed it through. And then grab my scissors and feed through another light triangle on my dark square. Now, of course, you know, light and dark is relative. Because if I took this, I'm going to part my needle and show you what I'm talking about. If I took this blue fabric, depending on what I put it next to, it could actually read as a dark or a light. If I put it next to that one, it becomes lighter. So it's all relative as to what you're putting it next to, but as a general rule, you want your darks to all be dark enough that they would stand up to any of the lights in your project. If it doesn't, you're still going to have an interesting project. It just may not show all of your economy blocks as uh, well as you want it to. Now I'm just finger pressing this, giving it just a little bit of a crease. Um, if I'm doing a whole bunch of these, I might take them all to the ironing board before I do the next triangle, but for just doing a couple of them, I just finger press it. That way that creases that back so I can feed the second um, set of triangles through because you're sewing on opposite sides. And when I get that on, I'm just lining up next to my center square and it's going to overlap. That's the way you want it. That's one reason why you have to make sure that you fold that back because if you don't, just for instance, if I forget to flip back my first set of triangles, then I'm going to trap that down. So that's why you have to make sure that you finger press or take this to the iron and press those first set of triangles back. Or you'll be unsewing. And so now I'm going right along the edge of my center square. And I've got one more triangle to put on this one. And you just center it on there. I've got a little ear sticking out on both ends. So I want them to be pretty similar in size so that when I feed this through, I don't have any issues. Now I'm going to park my needle and at this point I would take these to the ironing board and press those back. So I'm going to show you what that will look like. I had my iron heated up a minute ago, but we'll give it a second to heat back up. So now I'm going to finger press back my triangles. Just give it a quick little crease with your fingernails. And then I'm going to set my iron on it. It's still warm enough that it'll press it back. And while if you're using the acorn pressing pin, this is when you want to use it. Just give it a quick swipe, set the iron there and give it time to heat that little bit of pressing solution and it'll flatten those blocks right out. Now at this point, you're going to be using the a part of your um, square squared tool. That's not the square squared tool. I moved it. There it is. Let me grab, oh, I can use this mat because my fabric isn't white. So I'm using the A part. Say that again. We've lost sound. Hang on a second. 
that must be somebody's device in particular because I still have sound according to my device here so we're going to assume we have sound now this is a six inch finished block so I'm looking for the center square for a six inch finished block and there's also little slash marks at the halfway points all those slash marks are actually going to land on my intersections so I'm going to put this on here and then I'll talk a little bit about how I know where to place it are we still having issues Okay, I'll talk about the pressing pin too. So this little slash mark, if you put that on all of your intersection, that also will show that dashed line that is where your stitching line for the next ring of triangles is going to be. But that indicates where I need to trim. So now I'm going to grab my cutter and I'm going to cut up and across. Then I turn 180 degrees, and now this time, this bold solid line, not the dash line, because the dash line is your seam line for the next seam. Again, I'm going to put all those little halfway slashes on my intersections and cut up and across. That's my first round on my block. So let's do this one. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about the acorn pressing pin. Mine is well used in my paper. Is all crinkled but it is filled with acorn pressing solution is from the acorn company and this is my little refill bottle it's some kind of starch alternative and the pin has a little kind of um, styrofoam nib of some nature and when you slide it on your seams it puts the pressing solution only on your seams I don't know if you've ever tried using um, a spray. They do have a spray version. The only problem with doing that is sometimes it distorts the outside of your block or your unit. So that can be an issue. When you're using the acorn pressing pin, you're only putting the solution right on the seam. So it doesn't have that distorting uh, problem as a general rule. Now this one, you probably can't see my little slash marks, but I'm looking for those and putting those right on my intersection again. When I get that in place, this is my six inch finished center. If I was making a six inch um, square squared unit, this would be the center of that unit. And this is how I know that this is the precise size that I need. This is what actually is in the center of a six inch square squared unit. Now what I'm going to do is take these two back to my sewing area and I'm going to put those second set of triangles, the one cut from the uh, four and a fourth inch squares. And those are going to go on these parts. So I'm, I'm going to need a dark set of triangles for this one and a light set of triangles for the other one. Again, I'm going to put the square on top for a couple of reasons. That still gives me a chance to make sure that I'm using the square as my stitching guide, but also right there where that intersection, where the first two seams crisscross, that's where I need to aim for when I stitch. And when I get to that point, I want my stitching to come right across that intersection um, if I err, I want to err toward this side because if I sew here, I'm going to chop off that point, which I don't want to do. Let's see if I can get that where it'll focus. So I want to sew right on that intersection or a thread on this side of it. If I sew on this side of it, I'm chopping off the point and then I'm going to be unhappy. So I'm going to start stitching that. I'm using my presser foot on, as my guide right along the edge of my square, just like I did before. Questions? Oh. Is it now? Okay. So the somebody said they had never seen the pressing thing before. It's something we found at market oh, four or five years ago, and it really makes a difference in how flat your work is and I really like the results. It's a little extra time but it's worth it.
in the results that you get. So here's my second one, and I've got a light triangle to go on the outside of this dark set of triangles. This actually is called a stacked square. It's a technique that Deb Tucker developed using the square square tool, and there's even a technique sheet called square squared. Um, it's the same technique that you use for a snail's trail block. This stacked square is actually, uh, the snail's trail block is actually a stacked square. The economy block just is um, a single ring um, around the center and then one more ring to finish it. So now I've got my next triangle on and you're putting opposite sides on. You could also um, have a planned um, color combination that you could make um, interesting designs using your triangles around your squares. I'm doing this just as a quick and easy stash busting type project so I'm not taking the time to um, strategically place the color of my triangles. I'm just making the economy blocks it's a fun and quick way to, to use up your scraps, plus you can actually make two or three blocks in an evening when you don't have time to sew um, your bigger projects and just start stacking them up. You can make baby quilts that way for charities. And again, I'm going to finger press. Now see where that came right to that tip of my point. This is what I was talking about. If I stitch on the inside of that intersection, that chops off that point and then I get a flat point. Where if you are right on the point or a thread on the outside of the point, then you have a nice sharp point. I'm not gonna say every time I make it, but almost every time. So there's a nice sharp point there. So let's just park our needle and see how we did on this one before we sew the next sides on. This one's pretty good. Sometimes the color of your fabric obscures your point. There's this one. And now I'm ready to put on the last two triangles. That's another thing about this block. Since it's so quick, you can make them in a hurry. And you could actually use charm squares You'd waste a little bit, but if you had a bunch of charm squares you didn't know what to do with, you could actually cut them to the appropriate sizes and make economy blocks out of them. So there's that one. Now let's get a dark one. So on your... Um, handout for today it'll have what you need to cut in order to make this it's basically a crib size economizer um, quilt and if you want it bigger just make more blocks but it'll give you your cutting instructions for this and then next week I'll show you how to do the star blocks remember those are optional you can leave them out you can put just a plain block every now and then um, but if you decide to insert something into spaces that would normally be um, an economy block, something to think about. I think you'll be happier with your design results if you use an uneven number of replacement blocks. So if you look at my picture, I have five star blocks inserted. If you look at the larger version, I'll show you that in a minute, I think I have nine. And then uneven number, it just kind of helps um, with a random design. If you want something more planned, you might have um, an even number. But if you want it to have the appearance of a random arrangement, then you want an uneven number. That's true in a lot of designing. So I'm just lining that up, getting it ready to feed through. So any questions I need to be dealing with? And I'm aiming for that intersection. I want to sew either right on it or just a thread on the outside toward um, the, the seam allowance 
in order to make sure that I don't chop off my point. So I'm going to park my needle. I'm going to cut those apart. And if you had seen me sewing um, all of the blocks that I showed you a while ago, I had a long um, assembly line going when I was sewing those. So you can do assembly line. You can decide, okay, I'm going to make five blocks at a time. And that's a good way to, to make some and not be so overwhelmed with having so many to make at a time. So I've got my pressing mat here. I'm going to give it just a quick little finger press first. That way I make sure I don't have any little creases under there that I'm going to have to go back and repress and get rid of those creases. So once you get that done, we're ready to do the last trim. Let's go ahead and use the acorn pressing pin real quick. And if you watch me, notice I just put a little solution on there, set the iron on there, and while that's heating up and working, then I put it on the next one. So I basically do assembly line style on this as well. And it just lays down nice and flat. Now this time when I cut around my triangles, I want to use the B section of my tool. Now a couple of things I wanted you to notice. This one actually does have Invisigrip on it, which is a, a clear plastic static cling that helps your tool from slipping. Some people like it, some people don't, but it, it that is the purpose of it and it just comes in sheets that you can uh, adhere to the back of your tool. Now this time I'm looking for all the X's that say six because that's the size of my unit that I'm making. And where those X's are, I know those belong on my intersections. If I'm wildly off, if I lay this here and you see one that looks like this where the six is way on the outside of my of this center square. I'm either taking too big of a, a seam allowance or I didn't cut this the right size. If I end up with that six on the inside of that triangle, then the opposite is true. So they should pretty well line up with those intersections if I haven't been heavy handed with my pressing because sometimes you can distort your block with your pressing if you're not careful. So I'm going to turn, and this time the line here is my six and a half line. The edge of my tool is my six and a half inch measurement. And again, I'm looking for all of those X's that say six and a half or six. That's my finish size. And then I'm cutting actually a six and a half inch square. I'm going to cut up and across. Now, if you're left handed, simply turn your tool this way, and you're going to cut up the left side and across the end of the tool. So there's one set. Now I'm going to do the same thing when I get them in the right place. They'll pretty well disappear on the camera, but they're right on those intersections. The more of these you make, the more you'll line up with those X's appropriately and the happier you'll be with your results. So we're going to line up right on the end of that cut edge. Check all your X's, make sure they're in the right place, and trim up and over. So that is a couple of economy blocks to go in my project. So I'm just going to stick those on the wall behind me. Let me change camera so you can see. So I'm just going to stick those on the wall behind me so that I collect those till I get all of my blocks done. Um, and let me show you the, the diagram again so you can see. There's the economizer instructions, and that'll be in your handout. If you're doing this crib size version, notice I have five star blocks inserted. You could insert just a plain piece of fabric that you like. And what I was talking about, you could strategically plan placement of your uh, triangles to make stars, to do all kinds of things. I, ju I just didn't want to spend the time to do that for this project. This one is the one, and I think I've got nine stars. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 
Tony counts 11. So we are in agreement. So this one is a queen size quilt, um, all made with six inch uh, squares. You could have, um, you could do this with a stack of fat quarters. You just have to make sure you divide your lights and dark so that you see that pattern emerge. And it's just a fun little project to do. Next week we'll be doing stars. Do I have questions anybody's said? Say that again. Oh, Tony said she counted 12. It may, well, you know, I, I occasionally make mistakes, not often, but no, I'm just kidding. I make a lot of questions. Uh, I, mean, a lot of, I make a lot of mistakes. So until next time, happy sewing, and we'll see you next time, and we'll make some stars to insert in our um, project. And those instructions will also be on your uh, paper, so you'll have everything cut by next week. So we'll see you next week, live at 5. Bye-bye.